Welcome back, fellow mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we're going to be finishing out our discussion of lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH, as a potential therapeutic target as a way to enhance ketogenic metabolic therapy. Today, in particular, we're going to be looking at natural substances or natural compounds that have an effect on this important enzyme. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the time has finally come to wrap up this kind of long discussion about lactate dehydrogenase, which happens to be also the last piece of the puzzle in terms of an enzymatic step of the fermentation of glucose to lactate or lactic acid. And we have now looked at if we were to inhibit this key enzyme, by what mechanism would it inhibit or kill cancer cells? And we looked at all of the known kind of drug options we have for this, some of which were surprising, such as metformin and mimendazole, etc. But now we're going to be looking at what I would consider my favorite part of these type of videos, and that is the natural substances that we have in our toolbox at our disposal that have effects on this important enzyme. So the paper we're going to be using to look at natural ways of inhibiting this enzyme was published in 2023. The paper is titled Natural Compounds as Lactate Dehydrogenase Inhibitors, Potential Therapeutics for Lactate Dehydrogenase Inhibitors Related Diseases. And it says here in the abstract, lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, is a crucial enzyme involved in energy metabolism and present in various cells throughout the body. Its diverse physiologic functions and encompass glycolysis and its abnormal activity in association with numerous diseases. Targeting LDH has emerged as a vital approach in drug discovery leading to the identification of LDH inhibitors among natural compounds such as polyphenols, alkaloids, and terpenoids. These compounds demonstrate therapeutic potential against LDH-related diseases, including anti-cancer effects. However, challenges concerning limited bioavailability, poor solubility, and potential toxicity must be addressed. Combining natural compounds with LDH inhibitors has led to promising outcomes in preclinical studies. This review highlights the promise of natural compounds as LDH inhibitors for treating cancer, cardiovascular, and neurodegenerative diseases. And we will keep our discussion to cancer for now. So the mechanism of action. Various natural compounds can inhibit LDH activity through different mechanisms. The most common approach involves direct binding to the enzyme's active site, leading to inhibition of pyruvate conversion to lactate. Polyphenols such as quercetin or EGCG can bind to the active site of LDH, reducing its activity levels. Additionally, some natural compounds modulate other components involved with LDH, including not lactate transporters or mitochondrial enzymes. For example, rosmarinic acid affects the lactate transporters of cancer cells. Another mechanism underlying inhibition of LDH by natural compounds is the regulation of LDH gene expression. Various compounds such as curcumin, resveratrol, quercetin can inhibit LDH expression by reducing LDH gene transcription or promoting LDH protein degradation. In contrast to small molecule inhibitors, RNA-based inhibitors target LDH expression by interfering with its mRNA. As discussed earlier, RNAi and ASOs are commonly used for inhibiting LDH expression, which is achieved at the mRNA level. And although it talks about lactate transporters as being a way to indirectly inhibit lactate dehydrogenase, we're going to have an entire kind of micro series about the lactate transporters, also known as the MCT or monocarboxylate transporters in the future. So let's start out with the polyphenols. And so it says flavonoids, a group of polyphenols, Phenols abundant in fruit, vegetables, and medicinal plants function as LDH inhibitors. Studies have shown that flavonoids, curcumin, and quercetin inhibit LDH activity and reduce lactate synthesis in cancer cells. Curcumin reduces the LDHA activity, LDHA expression in human colorectal cancer cells, leading to decreased lactate production and cellular proliferation. Quercetin, found in several foods, including apples and onions, reduces LDHA activity and triggers apoptosis in cancer cells, effectively inhibiting cellular glycolysis by reducing LDHA expression, therefore suppressing lactic acid generation and glucose uptake. Camphorol, found in tea and various fruit, downregulates LDHA expression in human breast cancer cells through inhibition of STAT3 activity. Galloflavin, binding site of lactate dehydrogenase A, inhibiting its ability to bind to single-stranded DNA and suppressing colorectal cancer growth. Moreover, galloflavin has been shown to completely inhibit both LDHA and B. EGCG, the primary flavanol in green tea, inhibits LDHA and exhibits anti-cancer activity in pancreatic cancer cells and significantly slows the growth of breast cancer cells, triggering apoptosis through its action as an LDH inhibitor. Combining catechin, epicatechin, and gallocatechin with epicatechin, epigallocatechin enhances the inhibitory effect of lactate dehydrogenase A. Apigenin reduces LDHA mRNA expression in HEP G2 cells and human hepatocellular carcinoma cell line. Although the precise mechanism underlying inhibition of LDH by flavonoids is not fully understood, it may involve direct enzyme binding, gene expression modulation, or protein stability regulation. Luteolin acts as an LDH inhibitor and has been found to bind effectively to the active pocket residues of LDH. Additionally, luteolin 
7O beta D glucoside found in Blomus curtica non specifically binds to both LDH1 and 5. So this just shows that these flavonoids have a diverse effect on many proteins that are of interest for us in metabolic therapy. In particular, we're obviously talking about lactate dehydrogenase in this particular video series, but this kind of just shows the diversity of mechanisms that they have at our disposal. Some of these flavonoids are directly inhibiting the enzyme itself. Some of them are downregulating its expression and availability to the cells, and some of them do both. The positive side of all of this is that we have talked about every single one of those flavonoids in the past. Maybe luteolin has not been well talked about much on this channel, but epigenin, etc., have all been talked about multiple times, and they're readily available in food in supplement form. One thing I will mention as a side note here is that it will talk about, let's say, quercetin, you know, working on one type of cancer and curcumin working on a different type of cancer and galifolin working on a different type of cancer. But from our perspective, this LDH enzyme is basically operational and necessary for the cytosolic substrate level phosphorylation that is happening throughout all cancer. So therefore, even though it was studied, let's say galaflavin in colorectal cancer and let's say EGCG was studied in pancreas and breast cancer, it's very likely safe to assume that it's going to affect all types of cancer because this mechanism is present in all types of cancer because it's a hallmark of cancer. Alkaloids in cancer. Alkaloids, nitrogen-containing compounds widely distributed in the plant kingdom, have been recognized for their potential in LDH inhibition and drug discovery. Berberine and isoquinolinine alkaloid found in plants, including golden seal and barberry, possesses antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties, making it a valuable component in Chinese medicine. Berberine is known to exhibit anti-cancer activity through the inhibition of LDH activity and reduction of lactate production in cancer cells. In mouse models of breast, colon, lung cancer, berberine has demonstrated significant anti-cancer effects, inhibiting tumor growth and reducing lactate production. Moreover, berberine has shown the ability to suppress LDHA activity, inhibiting pancreatic cancer cell proliferation. Papaverine, an isoquinoline type alkaloid reported to inhibit LDHA, is currently undergoing clinical trials as a radiosensitizer aimed at reducing tumor hypoxia and enhancing the radiotherapy response of a549 non-small cell lung cancer cells and EO771 breast cancer xenografts. And the next group would be the terpenoids. And it says here, terpenoids, also known as isoprenoids, are a diverse class of chemical compounds found in a wide range of fruits, vegetables, and herbs. They exhibit numerous biologic activities, including anti-cancer properties, making them effective against various cancers, including skin, breast, colon, pancreatic, and prostate cancers. Terpenoids are also immune-modulating, antiviral, anti-allergic, and antibacterial properties. Some terpenoids have shown potential for developing anti-cancer drugs as they inhibit LDH activity and reduce lactate production in cancer cells. In patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, increased levels of LDH, A, protein, and lactate have been associated with reduced lung function. And Gossipol, a terpenoid, has been studied for its potential to decrease the expression of hypoxia inducible factor 1 alpha in lung derived from sweet wormwood, are well known for their anti-malarial properties and are widely used for malarial treatment. Dihydro, an artemisinin derivative, exerts inhibitory effects on glycolytic metabolism in non-small cell lung cancer cell lines by suppressing the glucose transporter 1 and impeding glucose absorption. This compound can also induce perturbations in lactate generation and concomitant reductions in ATP synthesis. Additionally, experiments have shown that dihydroartemisinin effectively reduces the expression of pyruvate kinase M2 in K562, HEP G2, and ESCC cells. Limonin, a limonoid in tangerines, grapefruits, and oranges, exhibits diverse biologic functions, including anti-inflammatory and antiviral properties. It has been reported to have anti-tumor activity against breast, liver, colon, and pancreatic cancers. Limonin's inhibitory effects on hexokinase activity was investigated in hepatocellular carcinoma cells, where it effectively suppresses HK2 activity, leading to decreased cell proliferation and colony formation through reduced glucose consumption and lactate production. Nimbolide, a limonoid derivative from neem tree, has demonstrated cytotoxic effects by regulating proliferation, apoptosis, migration, and invasion of various cancer cell lines. Oleanolinic acid, a natural triterpenoid, is known for its beneficial properties, including anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial, hepatoprotective, and anti-cancer activities. In endometriosis research, it inhibits lactate dehydrogenase activity and cell lines induces apoptotic signaling pathways. Moreover, it suppresses the mTOR signaling pathway in PKM2 production in other breast and prostate cancer cell lines. Uracilic acid, another triterpenoid found in various plants, including apple, basil, rosemary, and lavender, exhibits various physiologic functions, including antibacterial, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant 
antioxidant effects. For example, it's been shown to reduce LDHA expression in breast cancer cell lines. Additionally, betulinic acid, astragalus, saponin, and crocetin have been found to suppress LDHA activity and expression, leading to reduced glucose uptake and downregulation of the glycolysis pathway. So that was a lot of different terpenoids that were discussed here. And some of those mechanisms are not specific to LDHA, but the vast majority of them are. He was talking a little bit about hexokinase. We'll talk about PKM2. Again, these are all part of the glycolysis pathway and things we talked about in the past, but the vast majority of this piece of the article was talking about lactate dehydrogenase, both activity and expression that was altered by a variety of these different terpenoid compounds, which is pretty interesting. So now on to the challenges associated with using natural compounds as LDH inhibitors. Owing to their accessibility, diversity, and low toxicity, natural compounds have gained attention as potential and disease treatments, with compounds capable of inhibiting LDH activity being particular interest in disease therapy, given its role in energy metabolism. However, using natural compounds as LDH inhibitors comes with several challenges that must be addressed before the compounds can become effective treatment options. Some of these challenges are discussed below. So I didn't take the entire article talking about challenges, but I took some of the main kind of arguments against the kind of standalone use of some of these as your LDH inhibitor. So limited bioavailability. This is something that plagues us for every time we talk talk about these kind of compounds. Natural compounds can be rapidly metabolized or excreted from the body, limiting their effectiveness as therapeutics. To address this issue, researchers are exploring various strategies such as drug delivery systems, chemical modifications, and formulation approaches to improve the bioavailability of these compounds. The lack of specificity, natural compounds often interact with multiple targets in the body, leading to unexpected side effects. I think it's probably less likely to be a case with these natural compounds and drugs, but I'll digress. Some natural compounds have off-target effects resulting in side effects, while others may lack specificity towards cancer cells, causing causing toxicities to normal cells. Researchers are developing combination therapies to enhance the specificity of some compounds for cancer cells and minimizing side effects. Again, this kind of seems like almost like a projection from the normal kind of chemotherapy where they're truly affecting normal cells, whereas these natural compounds like EGCG, curcumin, quercetin, et cetera, generally are pretty well tolerated by the normal cells and even bolster their function. But again, just wanted to give the entire article here and what they were trying to talk about. So then it gives an entire section dedicated to what we could potentially do in the future to optimize both bioavailability and pharmacokinetic optimization. So under the bioavailability, it says natural compounds often have low potency and selectivity towards target enzymes due to their low concentrations in the natural sources. Optimization of bioactivity can be achieved through structural modification, semi-synthesis or total synthesis of natural compounds. Structural modifications can be applied to enhance their pharmacologic properties of natural compounds. This process entails altering the compound's stereochemistry or adding and removing functional groups. For instance, since Taxol, a natural compound with limited therapeutic owing to its low solubility in water, underwent chemical modification to create a more soluble variant known as Doxotaxel, which is a popular cancer modification. Semi-synthesis, which involves analog production through chemical reactions, is another approach for enhancing the pharmacological properties of natural compounds. Although it's not as demanding as total synthesis, semi-synthesis remains effective for improving the compound's bioavailability. An excellent example of semi-synthesis is the transformation of artemisinin into artazunate, resulting in more potent variant now used in malaria treatment. Total synthesis, the complete chemical synthesis of a natural compound, is from simple starting materials, represents the most challenging method of bioactivity optimization, but it also can be the most effective. For example, the natural compound shikonin has been completely synthesized, leading to the development of new drugs for the treatment of cancer and other diseases. And then pharmacokinetic properties, including solubility, stability, bioavailability, and metabolic stability, are crucial considerations for drug development. Some natural compounds exhibit poor pharmacokinetic properties which can impede their development as therapeutic agents. To address this, prodrugs can be used, which are inert compounds that undergo metabolic transformation within the body to generate the active drug. Prodrugs can enhance the stability, solubility, and bioavailability of natural compounds, making them more effective in disease treatment. Additionally, formulation technologies such as liposomes, nanoparticles, cyclodextrins can improve the solubility, stability, and release control of natural compounds, making them easier to administer and more effective. Conjugation with suitable carrier such as polyethylene glycol, albumin, dentromers, is another approach to optimize pharmacokinetic properties with this strategy aiming to enhance the overall efficacy of natural compounds as potential therapeutic agents. And this paper had a really nice table of all of the kind of talked about LDHA inhibitors in this paper, although there are more besides this paper, which I'll have a kind of a gestalt slide at the end like I normally do for what I could find in the literature that has an effect here. But this is a pretty good list here. And it then talks about where it's been studied, and then the mechanism of action, whether it's an inhibitor or it changes expression, et cetera, and then the references here. So again, a lot of things we've seen before in the past
glass, curcumin, quercetin, EGCG, apigenin, berberine, betulinic acid, and then a bunch more that we really haven't touched on too much, but are fairly well-known flavonoids and saponins and plant compounds. I wanted to particularly take a look at EGCG because it seems to be one of the stronger of the LDH inhibitors. And this is a paper that kind of looks at EGCG's effects on metabolic reprogramming as a whole, which is why this graphic is kind of so busy with all kinds of things that EGCG does. But if we zoom in right here, we see that EGCG has a block on the LDHA activity, which is preventing the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. And further, when it was studied, there was a paper that was published in February of 2015 titled Metabolic Consequences of LDHA Activity, LDHA Inhibition by EGCG and Oximate in these MIA PAC to pancreatic cancer cells. And it says that we compared the effect of EGCG to that of Oximate, an inhibitor of LDHA, on the multiple metabolic pathways as measured by extracellular lactate production, glucose consumption, as well as intracellular aspartate and glutamate production, fatty acid synthesis, acetyl-CoA, RNA ribose, and deoxyribose. And it says we found that EGCG treatment of MIA PICA to pancreatic cancer cells significantly reduced lactate production, anaerobic glycolysis, glucose consumption, and glycolytic rate that are comparable to the inhibition of LDHA by oximate treatment. So basically, they're saying that when they compare apples to apples, that EGCG is similar to that of oximate, which is the drug that we kind of looked at in the last video as being the prototypic LDH inhibitor, but had kind of a limited therapeutic effect because of bioavailability, because it was low solubility, et cetera. Some of the things that they were kind of talking about with natural compounds. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be a very good clinical kind of option for us, but EGCG is readily available both in food and supplement form. So I think this could be a pretty cool way that EGCG could be used. Obviously we've looked at it from a variety of other ways that it could be used at various other levels of glycolysis, as well as glutamine metabolism. And then I wanted to also look at, at berberine. So this paper was titled Functional Inhibition of Lactate Dehydrogenase Suppressive as pancreatic adenocarcinoma progression. And it was published in June of 2021. And it says LDHA is particularly overexpressed in this PAAD, which stands for pancreatic adenocarcinoma, tissues and elevated serum LDHA transcribed isoenzymes 5, LDH5, were associated with poorer patients clinical outcomes, genetic overexpression of LDHA promoted the proliferation and invasion of in vivo and tumor growth and metastases in vivo in murine pancreatic adenocarcinoma orthotopic models. While knockout of LDHA exhibited opposite effects, LDHA induced L-lactate production was responsible for the LDH facilitated pancreatic adenocarcinoma progression. A natural product, berberine, was selected as a functional inhibitor of LDHA, which reduced activity in these pancreatic adenocarcinoma cells. Berberine inhibited pancreatic adenocarcinoma cells, proliferation and invasion in vitro, and suppressed tumor progression in vivo. The restoration of LDHA attenuated the suppressive effect of berberine on this pancreatic cancer cell model. And we basically see here that berberine, when entered into the mix, is going to have an inhibitory effect on LDHA, which is going to limit the amount of lactate, which is going to change all kinds of different biochemical melu allow for the immune system to kind of turn on and start to kill these cancer cells. And it's going to lead to the opposite of what it says here when lactate is allowed to be outside the cell, which is primary tumor growth, metastatic spread, distant metastases, and poor prognosis. So finally, we get to maybe what we've all been waiting for, which is the gestalt slide of everything that I was able to find in the literature that has an effect on lactate dehydrogenase A as an inhibitor. Now, I didn't put specifically here, is this going to decrease the expression or is this going to directly bind to the protein? That I can probably do in the future and, and have some more specificity there about the mechanism. But these are all things we've seen before in the past. Melatonin, vitamin D, curcumin, quercetin, genistein, sulforaphane, EGCG, apigenin, psilibinin, milk thistle, berberine, betulinic acid, capsaicin, cinnamon, rhodiola, zinc, mebenazole, and ivermectin. So you can see here that when you give something like, I don't know, let's say vitamin D or melatonin, or EGCG or berberine, you're going to have a diverse effects on the normal system as well as these malignant cells, which is going to be putting the odds in our favor. If you like videos like this, if you like us going through the details of these different compounds, natural and drug that have effects at the key target enzymes that are making the difference for us at enhancing ketogenic metabolic therapy, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.